while the rest of the city struggled for a few final minutes of sleep at the end of an oppressively hot summer night, the Lewis infant began vomiting and emitting watery green stools that carried a pungent smell. Sarah Lewis sent for a local doctor. As she waited for his arrival, Sarah soaked the soiled cloth diapers in a bucket of tepid water. As her little girl caught a few rare minutes of sleep, she crept down to the cellar at 40 Broad Street and tossed the fouled water in the cesspool that lay at the front of the house. That is how it began. By Sunday morning, a strange quiet had overtaken the streets of Soho. The usual chaos of the street cellars had disappeared, as most of the neighborhood's residents had either evacuated or were suffering behind their doors. When word arrived of a terrible outbreak in Golden Square, Dr. John Snow was ready. That many casualties in such a short stretch of time suggested a central contaminated water source. But he needed to get samples of the water while the epidemic was still at full force. So he made the journey across Soho, into the belly of the beast. He had re-examined his samples from the Soho wells in the light of day and found nothing suspicious in the water. The more he thought about it, the more convinced he became that the water supply must have been contaminated somehow. But how to prove it? John Snow spent most of Tuesday looking for patterns. Equipped with a complete list of names and addresses, he returned to Broad Street. He stood at the base of the pump and ran through the list. From time to time, he gazed out at the empty streets around him, imagining the paths the residents might take to find their way to water. Snow realized he needed a way to represent graphically the pedestrian view of the pump that he had so painstakingly reconstructed. He needed to show lives and not just deaths. He needed to show the way the neighborhood was actually traversed by its residents. Snow's Broad Street map was a bird's eye view drawn from true street level knowledge. A neighborhood representing itself, its patterns plotting themselves on a map. It is also an emblem of a certain kind of community, the densely intertwined lives of a metropolitan neighborhood, an emblem that was made possible by an unimaginably savage attack. The Ghost Map, available from Riverhead Books.